Jake Ludington here at HP Discover, and I'm here with Mike Shaw, and you're about to give all of us a glimpse into the future. What will 2020 look like? Right, so what we've been doing in HP is kind of holding a magnet over HP and saying, what does HP think the world will look like in 2020? What we also did was we put what we thought was going to be the vision of the future out on the web, and we said to people, what do you think? So we formed a community, if you like, and I think at the moment we're running at something like 600, 700,000 page views of this stuff. So it's really been a very active community. What we did was we arranged things hierarchically. So we said, what's the world of the business going to be like? What's the business going to be like in 2020? And therefore, what is IT going to be like in 2020? And therefore, what are we going to need in the data center? What are we going to need to develop our apps? What are we going to need for mobility? What are we going to need for big data? What are we going to need for security and so on? Uh, and so for me, some of the uh, conclusions that we came to are that uh, the IT department of the future is going to be out in the business. So, so like embedded IT? I think so. Well, kind of, yeah, I think so. I don't exactly know how it's going to be arranged, but certainly at the moment you get the impression that IT is sitting behind the, the service desk, and that's been done for very good reasons. We had to centralize IT to get economies of scale, and the way to do it is to have a centralized support desk, service desk, and IT sits behind that. With the advent of cloud and things like that, not just external cloud, but internal cloud, we can automate a lot. So these guys behind the service desk can now actually get out and help the business. So imagine you're starting a new project. Let's say it's for a new uh, e-bike, uh, an electric bike, where you pedal, but it also stores the energy. Hot topic. Actually, you know, there's a lot of, apparently a lot of Formula One technology goes into these things. So you're on the team for that. That bike is going to have apps inside it. It's going to have a processor. It's going to have apps inside it. It might have a GPS. It might have a security system. It's probably got an optimization system for managing the energy and so on. Um, so uh, if you're on that team, you're going to need help from IT to produce that app. But also, you're going to need business processes. You're going to need business processes for how do you do the maintenance for that bike, for management of the supply chain for that bike, for development of that bike, and so on. And also, you're going to need data analysis. So we just released this bike. Is it good? If we do, we have maintenance glitches. What are our competitors doing? You know, looking at social media and so on. So I think you'll see an IT guy, if you like, embedded in the project team. Very importantly, he will have the same objectives as a project team. So often these days, it's like, hi, I'm the IT guy, and if anything goes wrong, see ya, <laughs> you know. But he will have the same objectives as the team, so when the bike's successful, he'll be successful. If the bike doesn't do so well, you know, he won't do so well. Uh, so he, will, he or they will work on the apps, and revving those apps quickly on the business processes, and also on the data analysis that goes with that as well. That's, a, that's definitely a different, because I currently in, in many organizations, IT is in direct opposition to whatever the project goal might actually be. Yeah, I agree. Um, and it's very interesting, actually. I, I gave a presentation recently to a bunch of users in Sweden, uh, H, you know, HP users in Sweden, and I, I said about this, and I said, you know, the IT department of the future has to think about these smart devices, and who's going to develop them? Is it going to be, uh, you know, business uh, computing departments, or is central IT going to help? Because, you know, if you just imagine you're doing an e-bike, you need to get updates to the software out there. IT knows how to do updates. You're going to have to manage security. IT knows how to manage security. You know, you have to maybe have compliance. IT knows how to do compliance. So I said, you know, there's a lot of skills in your central IT group that really need to go out to business computing. And if business computing hates central IT, it's really bad for the business. A guy came up to me from one of the large Swedish companies. He said, that's really interesting you mentioned that. Last week, we decided to merge our business IT and our central IT departments. And we've actually put it under the control of a guy from the business, not a guy from IT, for that very reason. We know we're going to have to push stuff out there, and we know central IT has the ability to do that, and we know we've got to get those skills from central IT out into the business teams. So it's already starting to happen. That's quite rare, but I think you will see that in the future. In fact, I would suggest that if the CIO doesn't embrace that, I think you're right. I think you'll get this animosity between the two. And because there's now an alternative with cloud, you know, increasingly IT will start to see services going out to SaaS or PaaS. So I think the, the, the CIO that's going to be successful needs to embrace this notion. So there are any other findings from the study that are, are interesting to highlight? Yeah. So I think I, I've already touched on another one, and that's this idea that everything's going to have software inside it. 
So, you know, you're going to have cookers with software inside. And I saw something recently on a shopping trolley that actually you give it your shopping list and it actually goes around. It was quite funny. It was a prototype and this thing's control software was wrong. And this guy was trying to, he, he picked something out of the freezer and this, and this trolley wouldn't let him, let him out. It was really funny. But anyway, in the future, you know, you might have shopping trolleys. You might have security devices that recognize your face, which are connected. Uh, so there's going, to be, there's going to be apps everywhere. So that's kind of the, uh, the much overused Internet of Things terminology. Yeah, I agree. But I, I, th I think it is going to happen. I, I, I know what you mean, but I think it is going to happen. Now, one of the corollaries of this is we're going to have, let's imagine you have a security device. You've got this device, it's got some processing power, but actually what it does, its functionality is defined by the application. So I can now change its functionality, improve its functionality twice a day if I really want to. Uh, and we saw here uh, a presentation from Game Show Network. They rev their stuff twice a day and they view it as experiments. I think increasingly, you know, you might have a security device or a smart trolley where the software is being updated all the time. And I think IT departments uh, need to be able to embrace that. So this idea of, you know, we do a change and it sits in front of the data center for, a, you know, three or four weeks while we stroke it and look at it and make sure it doesn't blow up. We can't do that anymore. We've got to get that stuff out there and so on. So that was the first one. The second one, which was really a revelation to me, and it came, but it came through so clearly, was in the Mobility 2020 chapter. So one of the key things that came through there, and in fact this came from our ES colleagues, uh, what they said is, you know, the, the mobile application of the future will be helpful to humans. So for example, let's imagine uh, you are in Barcelona and you're stuck and you don't have any money and you're in a taxi. Uh, that, I, I can't imagine that scenario at all because <laughs> it didn't just happen this morning. <laughs> and, you know, it would know it would know how you work. It would know how maybe maybe the taxi driver would have an app and it would know what how this taxi driver works. It would know where to find the ATM and all that kind of stuff. Now, in order to do that, let's, let's imagine it. Let's, let's, let's be more realistic. It's something that allows you to travel around Barcelona. It would know, have you been to Barcelona before? When you're in Barcelona, what did you do? What are your ha habits as regards eating? What are your habits as regards shopping? Where do you like to stay in a hotel? How do you like to travel? All that kind of thing. And that will be built up over time and kind of be sitting there like your personal avatar, like the best personal assistant you ever had. You'd also have increasing number of sensors, which would say, you know, are you in motion? What's your state of mind? You know, like this morning, you were probably pretty frustrated. We can actually get that from your brain waves, and there are, you can actually buy devices now that do that. I, I was mostly embarrassed, not frustrated. Okay, okay. <laughs> I don't know about embarrassed. I don't know how that shows up. But anyway, you'll have more sensor information, and then that will be taken, and basically big data analysis will produce recommendations for you personally. So what you'll be getting will be very different to what I'm getting. Not only that, it might be presented differently. You might like a really chatty interface, like my son on his Twitter, you know, you can get about a 10 second conversation out of him before he's gone on Twitter. So he's very interrupt driven. I don't like that. I like, maybe I'd like to be told, you know, this is what's going to happen during the day. So the way the information is presented, but that's all, that's, that's a big data problem. You know, that crunching through your personal preferences, what's going on around you and the sensors, that's a, per, that's a big data problem. So this marriage between big data and the helpful applications of the future, I think is very important. And that, it was a bit of a surprise to me that the linkage is so important and it's going to be so strong in the future. That, that's really exciting. Now, the, the one piece you haven't promised me is jetpacks. <laughs> no, now, it's, it's, we, we, a lot of the work, research, actually, we, we looked at what HP Labs has been doing. And it's kind of funny that working with HP Labs because they've got some really smart guys there and they've got some great ideas. And you'll have a conversation with them and you'll say, that's really good. Can I talk about that? No, you can't. <laughs> Why not? Because <laughs> it's proprietary. You know, it's, that's, that's a competitive advantage. So it's, it's been an interesting, it's an interesting thing. And I've, I've loved working with HP Labs, but we obviously can only tell so much. You know, we can't put research papers out there and so on. Jetpacks didn't come up. <laughs> that's unfortunate. But I look forward to uh, getting to 2020 and, and looking back and seeing at yeah. where we are. That will probably be depressing. <laughs> but I think it's important. I, You've got to make a best guess. You, you know, in, in IT, you've got to say, what's our best guess as regards what the business is going to be do, and therefore, what's the best guess as, as the way we arrange ourselves? Because otherwise, you could get blindsided by SaaS. You could get the business saying, you know what, we're going to develop all our own apps on these smart devices and not use you. We're going to go out to SaaS for all this stuff and not use you. And I think that's, that's bad for the business, because where's the differentiation if you're choosing the same services as everybody else? You've got to say, what's my core stuff that really differentiates me? So if I'm in e -bike, the apps that go on those e-bikes are vitally important and maybe the maintenance of those e-bikes so I've got to own to, to a certain extent I've got to own that stuff the rest can go out but I've really got to own that stuff so I, I think looking to the future is what we've got to do you know in IT all right well I, I look forward to getting there so thanks Mike <laughs> thank you thank you very much